Have you ever had an old friend that you used to know really well but then lost contact with? And then one day, they just walk right back into your life and you're just like, Hey! My fellow mutants, hello and welcome to my review of X-Men Days of Future Past. This movie is Bryan Singer's directorial return to the X-Men franchise and it is the sequel to X-Men First Class, a movie that I really love. This movie stars Patrick Stewart, James McAvoy, Michael Fassbender, Sir Ian McKellen, Hugh Jackman, Jennifer Lawrence, Peter Dinklage, Ellen Page, Sean Ashmore, Halle Berry, every X-Men ever. Ever. More or less. Going into this movie, I was a bit reserved thinking that it was going to be another episode of Wolverine and the X-Men. But thankfully it wasn't. Everybody got their fair share of the spotlight and there is a good reason for Wolverine to be involved in the plot. Which is a lot more than I can say for uh, several of the other X movies. Don't get me wrong, I'm sure Wolverine has his fans. But I'm not one of them and for me to see a diverse team like the X-Men constantly be all about Wolverine is just stupid. To be very honest, this has got to be my favorite Hugh Jackman as Wolverine performance to date. I'm not a huge fan of Wolverine and there's a good reason why. I'll leave a link to what the reason might be below so be sure to click that and find out what it is that I can't stand about everybody's favorite mutant. Basically the plot of the movie is about giant robots going all Terminator on mutants and humans in the future to make a dystopia. But luckily no divergence here. So the X-Men of the future send Wolverine back to the past to try and stop Mystique from putting these events in motion. And to do that, he needs the help of Professor Charles Xavier and Magneto. And here we have our movie. What follows is an interesting, fast-paced, exciting, emotional and fun movie about destiny and about redemption and about, most of all, hope. It shows the true transition of Professor X from 60s party kid that he used to be in X-Men First Class to the more serious, nurturing and inspiring figure that he is known to be. It also shows Magneto going from confused about right and wrong badass to just utter pragmatic badass that he is known to be. And I think that's awesome. There are two things that I want to highlight about the movie that are only tangentially related to the movie, but I thought they were worth talking about. First of all, let's talk about Peter Dinklage as Bolivar Trask. Bolivar Trask is an engineer, a businessman kind of guy who creates the Sentinels and he has a bone to pick with mutants for some fucking reason. And in the comics, he's not exactly a little person. He's just a noble guy with a lot of hate in him for some reason. But in the movie, he's portrayed by Peter Dinklage, who is obviously a little person. And I kind of am very happy about that because that means that Peter Dinklage was chosen only based on the merits of his acting. The fact that he can act really well was the reason why he was in the movie as this role. It's really progressive and it's really good and it shows that Hollywood is evolving a little bit to look past outward appearances and see the talented actor within and he really is talented. Anybody who watches Game of Thrones can tell you that this guy can bust out a speech like it's nobody's business. The second thing I want to talk about is the return of Bryan Singer as director. He really knows this franchise inside and out and it shows in the movie. He knows how to handle the fights, how to handle the talks, how to handle the inter-character dynamics and it's really, really well done. When you watch this movie, there is never really a boring moment and there's always something going on and usually it's something quite interesting. I really love that he is able to take what is potentially a melting pot of terrible ideas with the future, the past, time travel, so many X-Men, just and put it all together in something that is coherent, believable, and dare I say, likable, lovable, really, really fucking good. Some reviewers have been calling this the greatest X-Men movie ever made. Me? I don't know whether I would go that far. I did love X-Men First Class a whole lot, but I will tell you that this movie is to the X-Men franchise what Captain America 2 was for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It was the masterclass. It was something that redeemed the entire franchise. It was something that made even the worst parts better. It was something that stood well on its own, something that was strong, something that was really well made, and it it was amazing. 
And just like that movie, this movie is amazing. It does things for the X-Men franchise that you, as a fan, would have always wanted. There are moments in this movie where you just go like... <gasps> Just like First Class, this particular movie makes reference to the time period that it is set in, whereas the previous movie was set in the 60s, this one is set in the 70s. And it shows not only in the aesthetics, but also in the historical references that we have. We have the Vietnam War, we have JFK, we have Richard Nixon, we have a bit of the Watergate thing going on. It's pretty cool and I really liked it. It adds a sense of authenticity to the world that they've created and I just cannot get enough of it. Overall, I really liked the movie, the acting was great, the directing was great, the music was quite good as well, and I found myself really invested in the plot and not hating Wolverine. Before I give you my verdict, I'm gonna tell you guys one last thing, and this is very important. Please, please stay until the very end of the credits to see the post-credit scene. It is very exciting, it is very interesting, and I am super excited for the future. I cannot wait to see where this franchise goes. I have not been this excited for a post credit scene in a good long while. So please stay until the very end. I know the credits are boring. I know that nobody wants to really stick around while everybody's walking out of the cinema, but those people are idiots, all right? You and me, we know what's going on, so stay. Please stay until the very, very end because it will blow your mind hole. So in the end, X-Men Days of Future Past, pay good money for it, pay to see it, pay to own it, it is that good. So, X-Men Days of Richard Nixon, did you see it? Did you like it? Comment below and let me know. And if you like my videos, why don't you hit subscribe? I'll be making as many of these as I possibly can, as often as I possibly can. Anyway, thanks for watching my video, hope you have a nice day. Bye bye.